So I had just finished the video on backlash adjustment for the mill and the lathe and one of my subscribers uh, by the name of James, he mentioned that uh, he's got quite a bit of backlash on his z-axis and he's still trying to figure out a way to accurately set and measure his movement on the z-axis. Um, he didn't really pose it as a question, but I thought I'd take it as an opportunity to show one way of doing that. Uh, my first thought is to put a, a DRO on there, but maybe you don't have the funds yet to do a DRO or you're not ready to uh, do the mounting for the DRO and you want to have a direct reading. Uh, the, the DRO that comes from Sherline is a reading off the hand wheel, so it's not going to take into account the backlash. But this will, and this is something that you may already have in your shop, uh, so you don't have to spend any money on it. Um, you can obviously uh, do something a little bit fancier. It's, it's still probably going to be cheaper than doing a high-end linear DRO. Um, even even from like eye, eye gauging or a company like that. All that I've done is I've taken a, a flex arm indicator holder and I've mounted it to the back of my column since the column is steel. Now make sure that whatever indicator you, holder you're using um, will clear the lead screw, right? We don't want to interfere with that. And then this is a flex arm indicator holder which makes it nice and easy to, to wrap it around here and set it. Uh, this happens to be a, a Noga, one of the Noga short arm indicators. Uh, there are knockoffs of, of Noga as well, which will probably work just as well. I, I haven't tried it yet. I started out with, with the Noga since it was fairly reasonable, but they are still a bit pricey. So whatever sort of indicator holder you want to work with there, you could even put a, you know, make a clamp to go on the column itself. Um, maybe try to reach the square portion back here so you're not affecting the dovetails if you wanted to make this a little bit more of a permanent solution. And then I've just put a plunge style indicator on here. This is a, a Charge brand, so medium quality. And this is only a quarter inch reading. Uh, it's the first one I grabbed that I had on hand. But you can get these style with the, the plunge and the through head, the three, four, five inches or more. Um, and they're not that much more expensive and you don't really need a, necessarily a super high end for, for a depth stop here. So this will allow us that as I go down, I can go down 10 thousandths and regardless of what the backlash is, I can then come back up to zero and if I want to come down again to 80, I'm taking a direct measurement off of the reading that my head is moving. And regardless of the backlash in my hand wheel, which there, there is some, right now I'm moving the wheel, and as you can see that my indicator is not moving, and this is, this is new, and I do have the backlash adjustment uh, semi-tight on it. And this will allow you to, to get that sort of a, a direct measurement and an accurate setting of your Z-axis regardless of the backlash. Now I've got the plunger set to where it's on the, the head, right, don't go to the, the pulley, obviously, and, and going to the pulley housing, there's a little bit of flex depending on, on what part of it you were to indicate off of, but if you can indicate off of the aluminum of the head, um, that's going to be your best bet. And I just thought that I would share this tip as a quick, easy way to measure Z-axis movement in case you need to make a precise hole or a precise depth of cut, and the readouts from your hand wheel or the amount of backlash you've got from your axis. Um, you, you don't want to mess with trying to figure that out or to compensate for that. Instead, we've got a very nice, very accurate reading depth gauge for our Z-axis.